Hola, Vatas! We have breaking news coming in right now from the Iowa Screwjob, sorry, the Iowa Caucus, and that is the winner has been decided, and it is Juan Guaido. Yes, everyone, Juan Guaido is the winner of the... Uh, wait, hold... Well... Curva match! No, he's not. Anyway... This is Luke Dowski of We Are Change the Dark, bringing you another independent media report. And obviously, we are going to be talking about all the latest developments coming from the Iowa caucus. The latest updates with, of course, uh, the human virus. No, not this one, but the one coming out of China. And, you know, more important updates about the story of the decade. All provided to you every single day for free for you because... You decide to donate on wearechange.org forward slash donate. There are many ways where you could get involved in the fight for free and independent information. And the best way to do that is by clicking the link in the description below. Click the link right now. Get involved and fight for free speech right now. It is more crucial than ever. Now, jumping in to, of course, the latest annou announcements coming from Iowa. Of course, I was very facetious talking about the Venezuelan intelligence agency connected to opposition leader Juan Guaido. But it definitely seems like the Democratic Party, the DNC, has ultimately screwed up the nomination process. And what we're seeing right now could very much be deliberate in an attempt to screw over an anti-establishment candidate while promoting one that is more favorable to, of course, the establishment. Now, we were following this story very closely in yesterday's live stream. By the way, if you're interested in, in tuning into some of our more casual, nonchalant live streams where we go over breaking news and play video games, don't forget to check us out on dlive.tv forward slash we are change or our Periscope on twitter.com forward slash Luke we are change. Luke we are change on Periscope as well. So as we were watching and reacting to the Iowa caucus crap ola a lot of the talk of course centered around a possible screw job of bernie sanders and that's why some have said that what is happening now is not the stealing of the election process from bernie but voter redistribution and uh it definitely seems like that as there's been many official stories coming out of what actually was was happening with the process that is done every four years and again the official story that we got is that the iowa DNC was using a secretive app that failed to work before the polls even opened. Then many of the votes had to be counted by hand, which they were, and they were allegedly shut down and not provided to the public because of, quote, quality control. So according to the DNC's official story, two methods officially failed. Fail. Now, one of them failing, I mean, uh, uh, that could be a reasonable mistake, but, but two of them failing on the same night? I mean, that's just extremely convenient. Now, Fox News is even reporting that this app that failed to work is linked, of course, to the Clintons and a tech firm called Shadow, which the COO, the CEO, the CTO, <laughs> and a senior product manager all worked for Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Huh. <laughs> How convenient. And if that didn't happen, our, quote, democratic, in quotes, democratic process was, was left up to, in some districts in Iowa, to a coin flip which didn't seem uh, that fair since in some precincts Bernie had clear numbers, but because of the overcomplicated rules here, Pete, even though he had Pete Buttigieg, who had far less people, still uh, everything was left to a coin toss, including uh, this very precarious one where uh, Pete Buttigieg won, and it looks like this young man is literally just flipping the coin, <laughs> flipping the coin in his hands. And uh, yeah, that was officially ruled for Buttigieg. I wonder if there's going to be some quality control <laughs> around that coin flip, and uh, it looks like there won't be. Now you might be asking yourself, why does all of this matter? Who who cares if the votes come in a little bit late? Well, as ABC puts it, there's obviously a good chance that the candidate who would have won Iowa clearly won't get the expected bounce that candidates usually get. When a candidate wins Iowa, they are usually seen as the favorite to win the entire nomination, and they usually do. Other candidates who do poorly, they typically usually always lose support. And watching all of the news coverage from different channels last night, you clearly saw 
that Bernie Sanders had a lot of the energy. In precincts, there was a lot more Bernie bros and Bernie people out there than, of course, the dwindling and pathetic crowds half glazed over of, of course, Joe Biden's supporters. And, and again, I am not a fan of Bernie. I do not like his politics. I think they are probably the opposite of what I believe in. But um, outside of my political disagreements, I won't let this cloud my judgment and, and, and see that essentially it is very, very likely that he is getting screwed over here royally by the DNC that screwed him before. And this needs to be reported honestly and fairly outside of politics because this is unfair. This is not right. And if things would have gone normally without this kind of quality control dnc check without two of their systems failing at once which is so extremely convenient many people say that bernie of course would have had this significant bump which would have influenced the next primary in of course new hampshire and it's clear bernie sanders had the most to win out of everything and joe biden had the most to lose as some of his own representatives are now threatening to halt the release of the Iowa caucus. I mean, when you looked at the numbers, you, seriously, I was watching this at, at the different precincts. You saw just defeated, bewildered, confused, lost, older individuals, Walmart greeters standing around the little poor pathetic Biden sign. When you saw the Bernie supporters, they far outnumbered the Biden supporters. But it's not just Biden that is clearly benefiting from all of this. The clear winner, because you always have to ask yourself from this entire uh, mess, who, who stands to benefit the most here? And that is definitely what looks like the new establishment favorite, Pete Buttigieg, who freaking decided to declare himself victor of the caucus even though there is zero zero results coming in now a lot of this was too close to call but sneaky little booty judge just like many conniving lying manipulating politicians in the race just said hey i win it's me I win. and then of course the media derped along with his little incoherent mad man ramblings so yeah this is happening at the DNC, and you shouldn't be surprised since, of course, this is the usual tricks of the DNC as of late. And it looks like the establishment has definitely replaced one of its favorite previous puppets, Biden, with a new shiny one whose hands fit nicely and snugly into that puppet. And that, of course, is Mr. Buttigieg. And that's my own personal thought and belief on this issue. But importantly, what do you think? Moving on to other uh, destructive viruses, that's not politics <laughs> in the news. And that, of course, is uh, the coronavirus, which some scientists and experts are warning about a wave two and a wave three of this pandemic. Now, of course, we've been keeping a close eye on this story from the very beginning. The numbers are, are slightly increasing, but mostly flatlining. But again, we still don't know the exact severity of this virus because the Chinese government usually lies. They're usually very good at that. But the death toll right now is 427 officially. And so far, again, things are still very uncertain. They could still go in many different ways. But overall, for now, things look like they're settling. In China, though, they are taking more aggressive actions. People are being forcibly taken away and by the government or barricaded in their own homes or arrested for videotaping what is really happening there about a virus that we've personally been telling you most likely came from a bioweapons lab facility. You know, like the one also located in Wuhan, this is most likely the case. It hasn't been independently verified. It hasn't been 100% corroborated. But for right now, this looks like this is the probable cause of all of this. But yet, overall, this should be another reminder that you should always look out for your immune system and practice good hygiene, which we've been preaching from day one. Moving forward in a totally unrelated story, and that, of course, is the story of the decade, and that is the Jeffrey Epstein story. And we are getting the latest developments that just moments ago, Florida prosecutors released all of their entire documents 
relating to the investigation into Jeffrey Epstein. There's a trove of documents. They still haven't been looked over, but we are keeping a close eye on these documents and we'll be investigating them shortly for future videos. But so far, we also found out that Epstein's wealth was even more than originally thought after accountants added a fleet of luxury cars and bank accounts to his estate. Again, this man had very strong connections, property and wealth in Israel, in Saudi Arabia, all over the Caribbean islands, all over the United States, in New Mexico, New York, Florida, and still, I bet there is a lot more of these mysterious assets that, again, no one knows where all this money came from. No one could officially explain, no bankers could officially explain, no one connected to him, no one even on Wall Street said that they even saw him or, or knew about him or traded with him or even knew that he was on Wall Street, which again was the official story, which was a cover-up and, and found out to be an absolute lie. And I personally bet that his wealth was far more exceeding the now $637 million that he was estimated to be worth. While, of course, many of his co-conspirators are still out there free roaming the streets as now four, four Jeffrey Epstein victims have written an open letter to Prince Andrew urging him to talk to the federal authorities that are investigating this. And, you know, it should be simple since Prince Andrew promised and said he would do this months ago, and yet now many federal authorities are saying that he is impeding in the official investigation into Jeffrey Epstein, which we're very critical of. But again, uh, a lot of attention should be put on this letter that officially tells Prince Andrew to do this for the sake of his daughter, and they warned him that the world is watching. Yes, the world is watching. And this man definitely looks like his hands are in the cookie jar, as many people have labeled him the pedo Pinocchio Prince, who of course also has diplomatic immunity and so far only has faced public scrutiny for his incredulous behavior that should be criticized very, very heavily. So yeah, if you get a chance, get this story out there, get this video out there, because your voice as an individual human being absolutely matters many things come and go many things are uncertain but one thing that is not uncertain when the people as a whole raise their voice demand an issue to be heard that issue is heard and there usually are consequences for it for never to stop fighting the worst evils of this world as one great man said before to ignore evil is to become accomplice to it. And because you guys don't do that, because you guys are in the know, because you guys spread this information out there and support independent media any way you can, this is why I try to end every single broadcast by saying, I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.